We are now ready for problem 42. And we're moving on to the main second part of this class, which is integration. So hopefully you've learned all the integration rules. We go some through some of these pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, instead of going back and forth, what I'm going to do is write down a bunch of these problems. So 42 is the integral of 20 dx. I'm just going to copy these down, work them all out, and we can put in the answers. 43 is the integral of x to the fifth dx. 44 is the integral of x to the 3 halves dx. 45 the integral of x squared minus on x plus 2 dx. 46 is the integral of 1 over x to the fourth dx. 47 the integral of 12th root of x. So what else we have? We'll go into a few more. 48, the integral of 1 over x, the ups 4 over x, the x. 49, integral of 9 over x minus 4 over x to the fifth. 50. This one basically 50 is going to be the integral of e the negative 18x. All right. Let me go back to uh, 42 so it's time. I can put in the answers. All right, here we go. Rules are pretty straightforward on these integrals. If we just have a number here, You take the number times the variable, in this case x, and here's the key, and sometimes even I forget. You always have to put in plus c, where c, c stands for a constant. If you just enter 20x, it's gonna count it wrong. It has to be 20x plus c. Now here, sort of the power rule for integration is, you take the integral or the exponent and you add one and then you divide by the new exponent plus c. Forty-four looks a more complicated just because the original exponent is like a fraction, but the rule still applies you're going to add 1 to this exponent. So 3 over 2 plus 1, you can think of 1 as 2 over 2. Let me just make that clear. Of course, where you add a fraction number is you've got to change both of these to fractions. So 
Therefore, you finally end up with x to the 5 halves plus c. Now here, we have three separate terms inside the integral. Now the nice thing is you just integrate them one at a time. So since these are added and subtracted together, these are separate terms and we can integrate them one at a time. So integral of x squared is x to the third over three minus the nine just tags along. Integral of x is x squared over two plus integral of two, just two x. And of course we have our plus c. Now here, because we want to apply the power rule, Currently, this problem is not written where we can apply the power rule because the exponent and the variables in the bottom. So the first step is let's rewrite this and we can move the variable up to the top if we make the exponent negative, right? We all remember that rule. Now we can apply the power rule. I'm going to add one to this. So in this case, if you add one to negative four, you get negative three over the new exponent. Now, if we wanted to normally, we don't leave a negative exponent the answer. So a lot of times you may see this answer written like this. where you move x to minus three, you make the exponent positive, it goes to the bottom. I just move the negative out front, the three is still on the bottom. Now 47, once again, in its initial form, it's not really in the form where we can apply the power rule, but we all remember how to convert a radical to a rational exponent. So this is the 12th root of x. Twelfth root of x is the same as x to the 1 12th. So now we can take the integral. If we add 1 to 1 12th, that's adding like 12 over 12. So it's x to the 13 12th over 13 12th. Now this is not simplified. Now, one shortcut, because this happens a lot, where you end up with a fraction in the denominator. One shortcut is you can simply flip this fraction and multiply it by the top. So this ends up being 12x to the 13 over 12 right? Because in a sense, you take 13 over 12, and it's almost like you flip it, and you multiply the whole thing by 12 over 13. So that's one little shortcut to doing those. Now here's one that's a little tricky. And let me show you what some people do. And the good thing is, if you do it, even though you shouldn't do it, if you do it, you're going to catch it yourself. Because a lot of people might look at this and say, oh, here we go. My variable is in the denominator again. Let's move it to the top. So this becomes. And then if you try and apply the power rule, the four tags along, you add one to the exponent. Negative one plus one is zero. Then you divide by the new exponent. Although hopefully, at the point you do this, you realize, whoops, I'm divided by zero, which we know you cannot ever do in math. So I got a problem here. So it turns out, this is not how you solve this problem. This is the special case where you have the variable and the denominator with no exponent or an exponent of one. 
That's the special rule where you end up having the natural log, the four tags along, then the natural log of your variable in the bottom. And another special thing is the variable has to be inside these absolute value signs, these straight lines. So this is going to be four times natural log absolute value of x plus c. That's the special rule about when you have the variable in the bottom with an exponent of one. As a matter of fact, this next problem, we have two terms here. So we can do these separately. So look at the first one, nine over X. That's just like what we just did. So now we know it's nine natural log of X minus, now four X, four over X to the fifth, we do change that to four X to the minus five. So therefore I have four X to the minus four over minus four. And now hopefully you see the four over the four cancels. And when you subtract a negative, that becomes positive. So by the time you get all done with this, you have nine natural log absolute value of X plus one over X to the fourth plus C. And this last one, all right, there's a special rule when you're taking the integral of a natural exponential function, you have to look if there's a coefficient or a number in front of the X, the rule is that goes in the bottom of a fraction. And then you simply rewrite the exponential function. And that's your answer. Someone may My guess is, since this started out as a negative 18x, I think I'm gonna try and enter this answer and assume the negative exponent's okay. All right, so we finished all those. Let's go in, enter them all, and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So most of, these, most of these are simply just having to remember or follow our rules that we've learned for doing integrals. So this first one, 20x, just for fun, what if you forget the C? It says it's wrong. And it's easy to forget the constant. So on the test, Please don't forget to put in the constant. I mean, I'll go back and I'll give you most of the credit, but you're still going to lose a tenth or two tenths for forgetting it. So try not to forget it. All right, the next one we did, we said this was x to the sixth over six, once again, plus c. I almost forgot. This one we said was, I look at my notes. You know what? I did that one wrong. Aha. Maybe some of you noticed that. Let's go back. I forgot. 44. I got so busy with my showing you the what the exponent would be that I forgot to put it in the bottom. Now, therefore, if you follow our little rule, our little shortcut, this ends up being two X to the five halves over five. 
Maybe some of you saw that when I first did it. So, sorry about that. All right, let's go back and try and So two x to the five halves over five. You can't forget the plus c. All right. The next one, this is the three different terms. You do one at a time. First term was x cubed over three plus, actually, I'll put a subtract here. Nine x squared over two plus two x plus c. This one, remember we converted this to x to the minus four. So we ended up with a negative. one over three x to the third plus c. In this one we converted the x to the one twelfth. So I believe it ended up being 12 x to the 13 divided by 12. divided by 13 plus C. This is a special case. Remember where we said, you have the variable on the bottom with no exponent. I have to go down here and get my absolute value. And I can't forget to do the plus C. So this one, nine natural log X. Now I think this ended up being plus. Let me look at my answer. plus one over x to the fourth. Let's see. I think the last one we did, the special rule where you have to make this And e to the, you copy down the exponent. Don't forget the plus C. All right, we did them all correct, but one, where well, I forgot the denominator. So let's keep going. So here, what they're gonna do is, this is another way of writing it. You can see they give you the first derivative. First derivative of f of x equals six x minus five. And then they give you an, it's almost like they give you a point or they give you some information. And the purpose of doing this, this is going to allow us to calculate an actual number for c. You know, when you do an integral, you always tack on the plus c. But normally we don't know what number that is. We just leave it as plus C. <clears throat> well, here's an example that we are going to take the derivative. We're going to have plus C. But with this extra piece of information, this allows us to actually calculate what C is going to be. 
So our final answer won't have a C in it. It'll have a number probably. So let me write this down and I can show you what we're gonna do. So this is 52. So they give us the derivative as six X minus five, and then they tell us F of four is zero. You notice the F of four is zeros for the original function. Here's the derivative. So of course the way, if you're given a first derivative, the way you get the function is you have to take the integral of the first derivative. So the first derivative is six X minus five. Pretty straightforward derivative. Got two terms in here, do these one at a time. Six X squared over two minus five X plus C. Simplify this, 3x squared minus 5x. This is f of x plus c. Up until now, we normally stop right here. However, because they give us this extra piece of information, we can use that. That's gonna allow us to actually calculate a number for c. <clears throat> So what this means is f of four equals zero, which means you put in four for x and this whole function will equal zero. So f of four equals zero means you put in four for x minus five times four plus c. So this is 16 times three, which is 48. Five times four is 20 plus C. So this is 28, but I have to subtract it. And I'm able to determine that C equals negative 28, which therefore now my function is gonna be three X squared minus 5x minus 28. So instead of just writing the c, I'm actually able to determine that the constant in this case equals negative 28. Let's plug that in, see if we get this correctly. So it's 3x squared minus 5x minus 28. All right. Here's another one. They give us the first derivative. They give us some information. We ask for the function. So fifty-three, the first derivative is x squared plus nine and f of zero equals one. Right, so to get the function, I'm gonna take the integral of the first derivative, integral of x squared plus nine, x cubed over three plus nine x plus c. Now, if I want to determine the value for c, I use this information f of zero is one. So I plug in a zero for x, zero cubed over three plus nine times zero plus c. It's like these are both zero. So 
like c is equal to one. So it looks like f of x is going to be x cubed over three plus nine x plus one. All right, x cubed over three plus nine x plus one. All right. And another one, wow. So 54. First derivative equals five over square root of x and f of four equals 34. So, need to take the integral of this going to rewrite this. First of all, square root of x is x to the one half. Then I want to move it to the top. So it's really going to be five x to the negative one half dx. Now to take the integral, you add one to this. When you add one to negative one half, you get one half over one half plus c. If you flip this fraction to the bottom and then multiply it, I believe you get 10 x to the one half plus c. So there's my function, but I can figure out what c equals by using this. So f of four equals 34 equals 10 x to the one half is really the same thing as square root. So it's really square root of four plus c. So this is two, 20, subtract it. I believe c should be 14. So my function should be 10 x to the one half or if you wanted to 10 square root of x maybe i enter it that way just for fun my guess is i'm sure they would probably take either answer but just for fun we'll type 10 square root of x plus 14. All right, now we sort of do a story problem. So let's go ahead and take a break now. And we'll start looking at this one with the next video.